Hi, Felina Hansen here with Skylar McCurin. Hello. And we're here to talk a little bit about thought leadership. This is a buzzword really in the marketing mm -hmm. world right now um, that you're probably seeing a lot of, hearing a lot of, and we wanna give our perspective on mm -hmm. what thought leadership is. Um, so first off, I've been in marketing pretty much my entire career. And to me, thought leadership is truly about being a leader. Um, number one, it's about picking a niche, so to speak. It's, it's staying away from shiny objects and yeah. as we like to say, <laughs> and really taking a deep dive into a particular subject matter. So saying you're a thought leader in social media is way too broad. Mm -hmm. There is so much to that. But saying you're a thought leader in Facebook advertising, for example, and going really, really as a deep dive to that. I think the biggest challenge I see, and then I'm gonna pass this over to you for your thoughts, Skylar, is people wanting, how do I say this? A better way to say this would be uh, being afraid of not being able to capture all the business yeah. possible for your business. Okay. And so people have a really, really hard time what I like to say is they're trying to be all things to all people. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to be all things for, to all people, you will be remembered for nothing. And so mm -hmm. I had a nonprofit that came and asked me if I wanted to make a presentation on a really random topic, which it was actually on grief, because I was great at speaking. And so normally I would have said yes, <laughs> but I didn't want uh, to blur the lines for other people and starting to misunderstand exactly what it is that I speak on. So I actually turned the job down. Yeah. So once again, it's just thinking about how how is this, position, this potential job or opportunity, you know, build my profile and thought leadership in my you know designated area. Absolutely, yeah, that's a good point, and you bring up a good point in those early business stages. What I tell folks is because sometimes I'll, I'll talk to our members about this and you can like see the fear in their eyes. They're like, no, I can't say no to business. Mm -hmm. What I say, and you've obviously progressed in your career, so you, you have that opportunity to say no. What I say is you, you don't necessarily have to say no to certain mm -hmm. projects if they fall into your lap. Mm -hmm. But what is the messaging that you're putting out on your website, mm -hmm. you're putting out on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. you're putting out on, via your blog post? Who is that speaking to mm -hmm. and being razor focused on that and building your platform as a thought leader in that particular mm -hmm. niche, so to speak? It doesn't necessarily, depending on the stage of your business, mean you have to say no mm -hmm. to something that falls in your lap it's just how are you interfacing with the world so That's to speak yeah. and and usually i see like people relax a little bit like oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> that's fine i get it because we get you know a lot of business comes through referrals mm -hmm. if you're doing business correctly mm -hmm. and so sometimes it is it, it's great to have that compass and mm -hmm. if you're at that point where you can say no then do say no definitely mm -hmm. Um, but in those early stages, you know, just be conscious. What am I putting out there mm -hmm. and what am I open to taking as far as clients mm -hmm. go because I know I need to put food on the table. That's good. Yeah. yeah, so think about what you want to be remembered for, what you want to be known for and, um, you know, carving out some space in the world for you to be considered a thought leader in those specific areas. I have this argument all the time with new business owners that are trying to be all things to all people. I, I always use Starbucks as an example, mm -hmm. right? Starbucks sells like everything now. It's just, it's almost mm -hmm. crazy. You're like, they sell music, they sell this, they sell that. Mm -hmm. And I said, when you become as successful as Starbucks 30 years into your business, then you can be all things to all people. But yeah. Starbucks hey, started no. out. Hey, no. <laughs> Starbucks started off, a lot of people don't know this, 30 years ago selling two things coffee machines and whole bean coffee that's it mm -hmm. they didn't sell frappuccinos that came way mm -hmm. way later mm -hmm. right they started they sold two things that's Jeez. what they were known for Holy for like ten, 10 years <laughs> yeah and then once they you know became known for being this very high quality coffee company then they mm -hmm. started getting into all these other things and just kept layering and layering and layering mm -hmm. and that's fine mm -hmm. but you can't start off trying to be Starbucks all things to all people. Man, that one hit home. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs>